Right, now it's my pleasure, my real pleasure to introduce Donna Mitchell. Donna is a senior midwife at Birth Village in South India, has been there since 2013, and she's the creative, creator of the Active Mamas Fitness Program. She's a veteran midwife practicing since 1998 in the deep south in the USA and has worked across all birth and midwifery settings in over five countries. She's a dynamic and committed midwife who stands for women's rights and choices and is a powerful advocate for the continuing evolution of the deeper feminine through birth and beyond. Being a part of a woman's journey in pregnancy and birth is a cornerstone to all the projects she has worked on. Over the past decade, Donna has designed the Active Mama Workout, combining stretching, yoga, dancing, inner relaxation and meditation with a specific focus on labour preparation, orienting specifically on women's bodies and pregnancy anatomy. This is now a certified course and is used by trainers for prenatal as well as postnatal fitness. Along with working for Birth for Change in India, she has worked with Tejas Home. This is a home for minor girls who are pregnant due to violence and need a safer, respectful atmosphere to wait out for pregnancy and birth. As the senior consulting midwife at Birth Village, she has been instrumental in setting up protocols and practices, mentoring and training the midwifery team in all aspects of midwifery at this independent birth centre for the past seven years. She also has special modules covering nutrition and fitness and also teaches reproductive health and preconception classes along with menopause health. Donna is mother to nine home birth children, all living in the USA. She's homeschooled her children, runs a legal covering for home educators in Alabama, as well as doing consulting work for parents wanting to understand a child-led education. So it's my great pleasure to introduce to you, Donna, just let me give her the presentation. I can find her. Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you. Excellent. I'm just trying to find to give you to make you present. Awesome, Chris. Awesome. Oh, there we are. I don't think I knew that much about myself. There you go. I can't find you in the list. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Right. You can. You now have the slides. All right. All right. Thank you so much to. Chris and Janine and uh, VIDM, happy VIDM day to everybody. Oof, I'm going to echo, so I'll try to get over that. So I'm in India for the past seven years, and um, I created this fitness class. So let's get into the presentation and see some pictures of some beautiful, beautiful women. Okay. So the first thing that I want to um, start with is that women are the best care providers for their baby. Hmm, lost Donna's, we appear to have lost Donna's sound. Bear with us a second while we try and sort it out. Am I back? You are back, yes, Donna. Okay, thank you. So for me, what my foundational belief was that women always have an intuitive ability to know what is best for themselves and their babies. So when I created this program, I wanted to create a safe and enjoyable framework from which they could work within this framework, listening to their intuitive voice, to how they should move, where they should move, and when they should move. The problem is they have a huge external voices, pressures, beliefs, misinformation about movement in particular that often overrides that internal voice. So that was my main goal, trusting women to know what is best for their babies. All right. So as an American coming to India, of course, there's a huge cultural, societal, and religious 
beliefs that I don't understand that I'm just coming into. So I wanted to make sure that I created a, um, a fitness class that would benefit women no matter where they were coming from. All the women want a natural birth. So I really felt strong about including the somatic arts, relaxation, body and mind, uh, yoga, stretching, dance, and movement. This is really, really important to me. So there is a long history of exercise programs and theories going all the way back to the 1940s. So in 1940, Grantley Dick Reed basically um, talked about deep abdominal breathing that can interrupt the fear, tension, and pain cycle in labor. In 51, Helen Herdman developed the first exercise program with the birth squat emphasis rather than the fitness squat. Elizabeth Bing likened childbirth to a 12-mile hike. Um, 1989, Sheila was the first woman to discuss women tapping into their own rhythm of labor. 95, Elizabeth Noble had exercises to benefit childbirth. And Karen Diffler in 1997 even combined calisthenics body work exercise with aerobics-like dance. And then there's numerous dance fitness programs that um, are offered for the last several years. So with all that said, what does the latest research recommend? Because really when women come to us and their families in India especially, they want to know what is the research? Why are you having these women do all this crazy, crazy movements when we think it's unsafe? But, so we show them the research. So pretty much across the board, the studies say that regular exercise improves or promotes physical fitness. It prevents weight gain, decreases gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, operative vaginal birth, C-sections, and postpartum recovery time. It can also be essential in preventing or decreasing body pain, sciatic pain, reduces pain disability, as well as depressive orders in the postpartum time. There is no credible evidence to prescribe uh, bed rest for prevention of preterm labor and should not be routinely recommended though a full fitness class may be modified. Women who engage in medium intensity activity before pregnancy can continue activities during pregnancy. We use a scale called the PRE, perceived rate of exertion. Six is sedentary, 20 is the athletic level. So we ask women to keep it between 11 and 15 on their perception. And again, giving women information, they will be spot on with where they should be. We can trust women to do that. And the recommendation is 150 minutes within three days, but also daily activity. You're going to notice all these women doing their out. So exercise is defined as a physical activity consisting of planned repetitive or even structured movements to improve health. And of course, modifications may be necessary accordingly. So that's something that we also look into. Range of movement, center of gravity, all of these things are changing during the gestational time. So during workout, we always try to make sure that we have modifications available. And it's shown that women who even have no healthy lifestyle should be encouraged to view pregnancy as an opportunity to embrace a healthier routine for herself. Is everybody still okay? Everybody hearing me? Oh. <laughs> so let's talk about what are some of the conclusions. And again, this is coming from ACOG, from American Journal of OB, from the British Journal of Sports and Medicine with a Canadian study in 2019. So these are all pretty much across the board. So there are, are in the absence of contraindications, research shows fewer newborn complications and improved maternal health benefits. So physical activity is not associated with increased risk of miscarriage, stillbirth, neonatal death, preterm birth, premature rupture of membranes, neonatal hypoglycemia, low birth weight or birth defects. And that's a really important thing to remember because this is some of the issues that some people and family members have shared. And more physical activity, especially duration, frequency, and volume, is associated with greater benefits, especially if they start in the first trimester. 
There's evidence of less gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, gestational hypertension, depression, and weight gain. Prenatal exercise should be considered the frontline therapy for reducing the risk of all pregnancy complications and enhancing maternal physical and mental health. And this also includes women who are inactive, overweight, or obese. But the reality is, is less than 15% of women will exercise 150 minutes in three minutes. Part of this is education, part of this is family, and especially in India, that is a big hurdle that we have to get over is family being very, very negative towards that. So um, these are the five things that are often studied in research to see how the fetus uh, works with the maternal exertion. So they're assessing fetal cardio and hemodynamic responses, placental function, birth weight, fetal movement, and how the fetus protects itself. And we're going to get more into that as we get further along. So the effects on newborns. It is shown that exercise during pregnancy can positively influence developing systems for the, new, for the fetus, improve neuromotor development, and thus leading to infants who are more adept at movement and presumed to be more active. It all suggests it reduces childhood risk of obesity, and this is a point that I bring into my class quite a bit, is that the additional blood flow with increased oxygen to the baby's brain is a factor in increased brain maturity. So the babies are able to uh, deal with the labor as well as it follows them into adulthood. So there is definitely a connection between increased blood flow because of a far faster heart rate and brain maturity for the newborn. So these are the recommended, some of the recommended exercises. There's brisk walking, cycling, stationary, though there's a story we'll be telling you about non-stationary cycling, aerobic exercises, dancing, resistance with weight and bands, stretching, water aerobics, yoga, and swimming. Now bear in mind that there's going to be women who come to us with a higher level of activity, so they may be doing more than this. Um, so the main thing we do in our class is dancing, because dancing is pretty an amazing um, release of four different uh, hormones. Dopamine, which is pleasure, reward, and affects movement. Serotonin, which regulates anxiety and mood swings. Oxytocin, which we all know is love and bonding and well-being. And endorphins, which is euphoria, general well-being, and minimizes discomfort. So dancing releases all four of those uh, really, really nice hormones for women. So birth outcomes. Regular exercising can enhance the fetal protective mechanisms, providing there is no utero, utero placental insufficiency or any other contraindications. So this is low-risk women who have no contraindications. It also suggests that heart rate abnormalities, cord entanglement, and the presence of meconium is significantly reduced for women who are exercising. And uh, women who participate in regular exercise report lower levels of perceived exertion during pregnancy and labor. Again, this is key. The body sees a workout session and labor as exertion, and therefore when women are challenged in workout to um, know what their challenges are, how to deal with this challenge in labor, they actually do the very same thing. So they're definitely more, uh, they're able to deal with labor a lot better. So there are some contraindications, and this is something that the woman should be discussing with her care provider. Premature labor, rupture of membranes, bleeding, placenta preti after 28 weeks, preeclampsia, incompetent cervix, IUGR, uncontrolled hypertension, gestational diabetes, um, thyroid issues, cardiorespiratory disorders, and fever. That's not to say that we don't um, like modify classes, but these will definitely be the ones that the care provider, whether it's a midwife or doctor, and the woman, and the fitness person, whoever's teaching, should know these are contraindications. Now, there are relative contraindications also. These are ones that may or may not um, 
create issues where they're doing a full fitness class, but we can modify or we can do something different. Maybe they don't come in for the full-fledged cardio, but they would come in for yoga, stretching, and a definitely meditation. So meditation is definitely good all across the board. And these can occur before the pregnancy or during the pregnancy. And so this, again, is the woman is keeping a really good um, conversation with her care provider to know what she's able to do. And this is loss, spontaneous, spontaneous miscarriage, anemia, malnutrition, eating disorders, twins after 28 weeks, um, excessive over-underweight, sedentary life, and asthma. So there are some guidelines. So for the pregnancy class, we're very aware of individual tolerances. And I can look at a class of 9 or 10 or 11 women, and I can tell how they're doing, how do I need to modify the class, what can I do for them because maybe they're 41 weeks or maybe they're not feeling well or they were stressed. So I have to understand individual women. The prior fitness and level training of the women, somebody who's a dancer or a yoga teacher who's coming into class is going to have a higher tolerance of what they're able to do. And then also making sure that each one has proper medical assessment, whether that's the midwife, whether it's her doctor, whatever it is. This is a really important aspect. And fitness professionals have training for basic fundamental anatomy and physiology, basic modifications for appropriate individual needs, how to make the workout safe, enjoyable, and beneficial, which is the most vital, uh, vital thing for women. It's safe, enjoyable, and beneficial. Effective in alleviating maternal discomfort and provide a good prep for birth. And then the fitness trainer, and we tend to understand what is the interactions on the physiological systems, cardiovasculature, thermal regulations, the fetal response to the maternal exertion, met metabolism, and the respiration of the woman. And also one of the things that I really want to relate to women is that class, uh, you know, is we want to do daily life. So when we're doing squats, I say, women, you're going to be squatting to pick up your child. You're going to be holding one child and you're going to be reaching for another one. So we're doing squats. We're doing shoulder work because we want strong arms to hold our children. We're doing glutes because we want to be powerful in walking. Um, strong core, strong TVA, because that's the basis of walking, getting in and out of the car. And what I also tell the women in class is, you know, the fastest creature on earth is a toddler. If you don't have the agility and the strength to go after your toddler, then we need to work on that. So this is what we're working towards. But let's be real, <laughs> women have always worked during pregnancy, forever how long humans have been pregnant. So what I tell people in my class is classes are abnormal ways of getting women the movements they need to make a healthy pregnancy and labor and birth. We have to do this because our society does not have women doing walking in the villages, um, taking care of their herds of cows, going to the river to wash clothes. We have very much a sedentary life. So this is why we have a class, but I try to link all of the workout with daily life. Sorry, I'm okay. I'm not, is everybody else hearing it three or four times? Okay. <laughs> is everybody enjoying the pictures? I hope so. These are some pretty amazing women. Uh, I always tell the women they are on the edge of India, the, the cutting edge of India making changes. This is the real main thing. So in designing a two-hour class, I do two hours three times a week. So we have centering, which is just basically coming into the class, some deep breathing, assessment. And one thing I tell women in class, never say, I can't do this. Always put it in, what can I do today, which may include some modifications. Um, we learn breathing and posture. To me, those are the two most important things is breathing and posture to make sure that their body is ready for whatever work they're about to do. We do warm-ups. It could be stretching yoga. It could be a dance song. And then we do medium intensity, which is 11 to 15 on the PRE. Then we often address specific areas of discomfort, whether it's upper strength, pelvic movements, glutes, um, and the one thing that I really want to make sure I do is really do anatomical correct names for everything, because really some women don't know anything about their pelvis. 
They don't know the parts of their pelvis. They don't know the parts of their um, abdominal girdle, the TVA. And so giving them information really motivates them to keep going and come into class. We often have partner day. So then women are working extra hard when they have to bring their husbands in to see just how hard they've been working. So that's a pretty exciting thing. So there are things that can positively or negatively impact. Positively, somebody who's already, um, already active before pregnancy, loves social aspects of other women, communicates with others about her pregnancy, she's really excited. Um, it's a fun and beneficial workout. And also another thing we see is sometimes women who've come with C-sections that may have been traumatic or they feel unnecessary, and they meet other women who are also doing, going for VBACs. And they're really, they really feel a connection. So they really, really want to come to the class, hear the stories, and then as women have babies, they hear those stories also. Negatively would just be women who are not used to movement, who um, come to class new, they're overwhelmed. And then there's, again, societal things like proper exercise clothes. I have women come in full burkas and full kurtas and dupatas, and, and it gets very hot really quick. Whether exercising during pregnancy is good um, and traveling to class can be a huge barrier, which causes negativity. Cultural restrictions, often women don't go anywhere without their family. So coming to class may include their mother, their sister-in-law, their father, their brother. So we have to really keep that space sacred and safe just for women. But these can be negative things when women are not used to being in a situation. Like day or a religious festival, and so they're not eating well, so they have low energy and dehydration. So these are all So we often have women come in, sometimes they bring their older child with them to the workout because they want that bonding, they want to be part of it. And then other times women come by themselves because with an older child and being pregnant with the second one, they want that connection just with that baby because they had it with the first one. So both of them are valid reasons. And it's up to the woman, again, that intuitive voice, what do I need today? And this is really, really important to um, encourage. Here we have a woman uh, who brought her second, uh, her first child. And you can see she's still doing the workout. Uh, the child is, help she may be modifying a little bit. And the thing about it is, this was a huge release of oxytocin for the whole class. Everybody loved it. Everybody thought it was cute. So it's good for her, it's good for the child, and it's good for the class. So some of my um, class elements are affirmations to prepare for labor and birth. We again teach anatomy and physiology. I want women to know about their bodies, muscles, ligaments, fascia, how the pelvis moves, even the importance of the diaphragm, which is part of the labor process. The diaphragm helps get a baby out, so the breathing is really important. Building stamina with body movements, because again, birth requires stamina. And and understanding the parasympathetic rest or the sympathetic flight or fight or freeze nervous system and how to use each one of them in any situation and why they would use one or the other. <clears throat> and then proper posture and breathing technique. This is, again, a number one thing that I try to teach women. So again, here's family and friends discourage them often. Um, they often say stop all yoga, even if it's a yoga teacher or someone who's been doing yoga for years. They tell them not to go swimming because the baby will drown, water will get into the vagina, the baby can't breathe, not let him go to the pool or the sea. <clears throat> so there's a lot of myths around water. Exercise and cardio will affect a premature baby or a small baby. Um, or a fetal demise, do not bend or squat because your water will break, and no sitting on a hard floor. All right, I'm going to speed up a little bit just because we got a little bit of time for questions. Medical care providers also say stop all exercise, even for an SGA baby with no advice to calories. Do not climb the stairs because exercising will create an oxygen deficit to the baby, which we know is opposite. 
and often using the threat of premature labor or small babies. So this is a um, story of a woman. She's in her third trimester, and I'm a cyclist here, and she is a cyclist, and she would come to classes on her cycle. So we actually did a 21-kilometer cycle marathon. Um, really a lot of fun, and you see her Blue Ribbon Finishing um, Award. And actually, when she came into the uh, birth center, she actually she gave us at least two minutes to get her baby because as soon as she walked in, we got our gloves on, baby is born. So that was a really nice uh, thing for her to do. <laughs> so here's a class, and we brought Halloween to India. And of course, women just jump into it. So if you look really closely, you can see the avocado, you can see the soccer ball. The woman, the third woman is this uh, very um, ghost story that's here in South Carolina, this woman ghost. We have a superhero. Um, a sleuth, we have all sorts of things, and I'm in my rainbow wig. So women really enjoy a fun class. And then henna, meditation with henna is always a really nice way for women to relax when there's a lot of stress going on in their life. That's really, really important. So the women who have birthed their first baby without exercise and did with the second one, basically said they felt babies were in a better position. They understood better what labor actually was because nobody had told them what it was. They felt more confident about their body. They felt more confident about that they could birth their baby and again enjoyed working out with like-minded women with a common goal. And for women who have had their first babies with exercise and their second ones, of course, they know everything about exercise. They appreciated the energy they have, especially when they're running after their second one. Um, sometimes they weren't as well about coming into class with their second babies because they're, but they always said that they missed it and they really did try to come. Now, my observations as a midwife, there's a lot of things about this, but the main thing what I wanted to get across is their ability to meet the challenges of whatever the labor woman has with stamina, commitment, focusing, and strength. This is my main goal. No matter what the labor throws at them, no matter what the labor is, they have the stamina and the ability to finish it in their support team. Again, another class, and there's various gestational weeks, different parodies, variety of languages, cultures, backgrounds, but the goal is they all want a natural birth, they all want to exercise, they all want to feel good. And this is really the binding that creates so many friendships within this class. So then we had a lot of women asking for me to teach them this unique class so that they could bring this class into their communities because people from all over India were coming to my class and they wanted to offer this to their pregnant um, ladies in their community. So we decided to create the Master Active Mamas class. It's a three day intensive course, 12 hours a day with a three hour test. You'd be amazed how everybody is just astounded at the test. I don't know what it is. Women from all over India attended. They had, we have doulas, childbirth educators, yoga teachers, physiotherapists, midwives, nurses, and they all enjoyed it and they all learned something about how to work with pregnant women individually as well as in a big, huge group. And to me, that was the most important thing. So you saw this woman, Kanchan, in several of my pictures. She is a third trimester. Um, Kalari student, which is the modern martial arts originating in Kerala, her and her husband. And she just took some amazing pictures to show that she was doing this before the birth, before her pregnancy, and she continued in her pregnancy. And it's just an, it's just an ideal picture of a very strong woman who knew what she wanted to do with her body, and she continued doing it. So this is a quote that I really, really love. Um, laughter, song, and dance create emotional connections. They remind us of the one thing that truly matters when we are searching for comfort, celebration, inspiration, and healing as we are not alone. This is by Brene Brown. And the women on the left are the midwives of Birth Village that I work with. 
We had a beach party, actually. <laughs> and the first class that we had on the uh, teacher training course is on the right. So this was um, their first class. And, and we even had a 10-year-old child there who's one of my best assistants ever, Eva. So thank you for listening. And is there any questions that I can answer? I think we have a little bit of time. Thank you, Donna. That's that's wonderful timing. We certainly have a good 10 minutes or so if people would like to ask any questions. In, a, in about 10 minutes' time, I will wrap up the session with a couple of closing slides. So um, if you have any questions, uh, type them in the chat box and Donna will answer. Or if you would like to actually voice yourself, we'll see if we can sort your microphone out. And I, I have to say, I really, to I really enjoyed the presentation too, Donna. It was it was really inspiring and excellent to see how you you're empowering women. Chris, thank I you. have thank a question. Chris. Yes, go. So thank you, Donna, for a absolutely amazing um, presentation. Some comments are very very positive. They're saying that you bring women alive. Um, and they're desperate to get online class details and they would like your guidelines. But I'd like to ask you one question. How difficult was it to convince partners, male partners, to support their women to access their classes in the first place? Well, I have to say we have, for the most part, a captive audience. Most of these women are coming to Birth Village to do a natural birth. So exercise is a high recommendation and their husbands are supporting them. So if their husbands are there, I mean, they don't necessarily want to come to class, but they're there to support their wives. And once they get there, they're actually enjoying it. So I don't think it's that hard. Even some of the ones that husbands did absolutely horrible in class, they came there to support their wives. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Janine. There's a couple of questions in the chat here. So one from, from Red Miller, which is how can we get this program, help to get this program happening throughout the country rather than just Birth Village? Well, that's what we've been doing is we've had a class in Cochin and Goa, and um, we really wanted to have one, of course, this year and a couple other places that that's not been there. So we're just trying to figure out when's the next time we'll be doing a teacher training and definitely keep track of Birth Village on Facebook, and they will announce any dates. Nice. Deepa, as you. far as the reaction of medical providers, um, I don't know. I mean, there's still a lot of providers that are wanting to, women to exercise. I don't think they're understanding it, the, the level of exercise that we are doing. They're thinking really small walking, a little bit of yoga. Um, but we really haven't seen a lot of medical providers as far. I know they're discouraging women when they will. Uh, mention that they will discourage them. I think a lot of times we'll even have mothers who, um, the mothers of the client who've been very much against everything and so they'll actually bring them to class and we've actually had mothers come to class with their daughters and do the workout with us. And so sometimes the exercise class is a game changer because women, they maybe remember their grandparents moving a lot. They remember that, you know, there's always been activity. And so it brings out that intuitiveness about movement is good for pregnancy. So sometimes we get a lot of converts from the, the parents of the client by them coming to the exercise class. Well, that's good because if you can get to that generation, then there's hope for the, the generation of mothers mm -hmm. themselves if their parents uh, are interested. Yeah. Um, yeah, Janine asks asks another question. Um, are you are you going to um, visit other countries back to the USA or maybe Europe or whatever to encourage other providers on your technique? We would definitely love to bring it outside of India. Um, that's been always been on the books as far as taking it to countries where people uh, want it. I have to say in the U.S., I don't know how well that would go because as a midwife in the U.S., I don't see my clients doing this kind of class, mainly because the distance, their distance is so far. But we're always open to going to other countries and um, teaching this.
Okay, we have a few more minutes if uh, anyone has any more questions. I know that during um, during the labor, all women remember the words I've said, the affirmations I've given. They ask for the workout song so they can do movement on the stairs. They can do all the uh, all the medium intensity during their labor. So these are things that are really embedded into their minds and into their bodies so that in labor they're able to bring forth that intuitive voice of movement and this is really really important thanks everybody it was easy to start classes because the women coming to birth village want the want the best optimal pregnancy and movement is part of it so we didn't have a lot of problems getting people to classes we've had more problems getting people outside of that mind Set who are still seeing medical care providers to come into class. It's also really nice to see testaments from people who know your work who have attended this presentation. That's really that's really good. <laughs> yes, a lot of women have. It's been amazing. I really am thankful to them that they stepped outside of their comfort zone and societal beliefs and really decided that they were going to do this and everybody just really rose to the occasion to make this exactly what it is. Excellent. Oh, there's a technical question from Rubia Rubaya there. Can they do can you do deep squats for a long time if the baby's head is not engaged? This this is not I can't answer that because it'd have to be an individual case. So that's something that I'd be able to give information on. Um, do I find demographics? Yeah, have all societal levels, religious levels, um, everything. That's one thing I liked about India is there's so many different um, people represented everywhere from village women to women who are very well off to all the religious beliefs from full modern women to women wearing full burqas even during class. So definitely it's there um, and it's been very nice to see them. And it was, yeah, it was easy to start a class. Excellent. That's good. Thanks. Um, probably time for one last question, and then uh, we'll we'll wrap up the presentation. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask then because it was quiet. Do you feel that you've left a massive legacy to the women in India? I think that I have made a difference in the women who have come to me and I'm hoping that by training them they can take it into their communities because really that's my goal is I want to bring it to them so that they can take it in their communities because I, that's the way I think it should be. But I think I've definitely given a lot of people a lot of things to think about when it comes to movement and exercise and fitness and I think from talking to women that have been in my class, they definitely will bring that down to their children they will bring it into their families. Mm -hmm. They'll bring it into their communities. Whether they teach it or not, they are talking about it. And that's where the change is going to come in India, is these women who are so brave coming into class, and they'll take it to their communities with their conversation. That's Thank you, your Donna. legacy, then. You. <laughs> and what a fine place to finish. So. Um, I'm going to take back the presenter and say thank you very, very much, Donna, for a really interesting presentation. Um, and obviously, lots of people were interested in the audience as well. So thank you very much for that. A um, couple of credits from Donna and some references.